Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So in this video, I wanted to give you a quick overview of how you can use Jest, which is basically a tool that you can use to run tests over your functions and your code. And this is gonna be kind of like a casual uh, walkthrough. I'm not gonna kind of go into too much detail, but just know that when you're running professional quality software, you're gonna have to have a lot of tests, okay? So it's really important to understand how to write unit tests, um, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests, smoke tests, etc. So with that being said, I'm going to show you some really basic unit tests that you can write over what I have is an express function, okay? So if you are familiar with Node and Express, typically in Express you have like functions that are called that have a request and a response object. Um, I kind of abstracted that away and built out my business logic inside of a function. So we're going to be testing out just a function here that takes in the user payload, and then it also takes in some context, okay? So you can see here we have an endpoint called slash auth slash register. And basically this is just an endpoint that takes in a username and a password. It's gonna create a user object and save it to a database and do some validation, all right? So let's try to keep this pretty simple. What we're gonna be doing is writing a unit test over this, right? Or multiple different types of unit tests. So if we look at the code, the first thing this function does is you can see that it builds up something called a joy validation schema. This is just another third party library I brought in called Joy, and you can use this to validate data, right? So if someone does a post request to your register endpoint, you wanna make sure that that password is a certain length. You wanna make sure that the email is a correct email, um, and a lot of other things that you can check as well. So we're gonna just do some basic validation and write a unit test to make sure that this is actually working as we think it is. There's a lot of other stuff too in this function that we might not might not get to, but let's just try to start writing some basic unit tests. What you typically do in Jest is you have a file and you put it directly next to the, the file that you're trying to test, right? So we have a register interactor.test file. And inside of this file, you typically want to import the function or the module or the class that you're trying to test. So I'm gonna say const register interactor equals require dot slash register interactor. All right, so that's gonna bring in that function that we're trying to test that's here. You can see I'm exporting it. And we need to start writing something called a describe block. So if I write describe, this is like a global function that's provided by the test, by the Jest runner. And typically you put like a description of what module or class you're trying to test. In this case, we're testing a function. So I'm just gonna put the function name here but you can put whatever description you want if you're doing like test-driven development or behavior-driven development or something like that. So as you can see here, the describe function also takes a second parameter, which is gonna be a callback function. Now what you need to do in this callback function is write what we call it statement. So an it statement is like a small piece of the function that you're trying to verify. So in this case, I'll put it and I'll type a description, right? Should verify the user passed in as an email, okay? So something simple like that is what we're gonna test. And what we can do in Jest is there's another global keyword called expect, right? You're gonna be using this a lot in Jest. So I'm gonna say expect. And then if autocomplete didn't just do all that, I'm gonna put the, uh, the function I want to actually verify. So I'll call it like this, register interactor. And I'm gonna actually pass the first argument. If you go back to the code, you'll notice that it takes two parameters, right? The first one is an object that has a get user and a create user. And the second one is like a user object. So let's actually pull this up here and call it context. And we can call it like get user. Uh, I'll just make an empty function for right now. And then we can also say like, what was it? Save user? Oh, it's create user. So create user, right? So I'm kind of like stubbing out some functions that this function depends on. Uh, these are called like stubs, I guess you can call them. But so for this file, what we're trying to do is if you were to pass in this context and also pass in a user object that's missing a, an email, right? So if you were to maybe pass in a password, one, two, three, four, five, six, but you forgot to pass an email, we want this function to throw an exception. So I'm actually gonna rename this description to make it more specific. I'm gonna say should throw an error if the user passed in if the user is missing an email, how about that? That's a little bit more, a better name for this test because that's actually what we're gonna verify. So with that, this expect statement, you can kind of tack on other functions to it, right? So I could say expect this function call uh, to reject, or I'm gonna say rejects 
and then I could think I could say to throw, and then you can pass like the error string that you're looking for. So in this case, what I like to do when I'm writing tests is just make the test fail. So I'm gonna expect that it throws something that has like, I don't know, Z in the name of it. And now at this point, what you can do is you can actually run this. So to actually run this test file, I set up a script here in my package.json file called test API. So when you run this, it's gonna run just over all your test files, right? So any file that has dot test in the name, it's gonna to try to execute. So let's just try doing that. So I'll say npm run test API. Um, and this is failing because I am in the wrong folder. So I'm gonna go into my API folder, try to run it again, and hopefully this works as we think it should. All right, so you can see here, the test actually failed. And in the green, this is what your test actually expected, right? So we expected Z's to be printed out in that exception that was thrown. But what we got back is something that says email is required. So what I would like to do instead is basically change that assertion to just make sure that it throws email is required. And that is going to basically be a better way to verify that the tests or that the function is doing what we think it is. All right, so sorry, I have another test I need to skip. So let me show you something cool. You can actually do dot SKP on the describe block and just will not run it. And then, uh, so if I run this now, I shouldn't get that error. All right, well, I'm getting that error because I'm trying to import a, func a file that's named incorrectly. All right, sorry about that, but just keep that in mind. You can skip stuff. All right, so also you can see down here, it says it skipped a bunch of tests. Um, hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much in this little tutorial. It's just, we're gonna skip that test. I think there's also a way to say only run a particular test. I think it's like dot only, but we won't go into that. So now we have a test that we saw fail and it failed because it's actually throwing an exception and we were checking the wrong string. And now we're actually changing our test to verify that if someone doesn't pass in an email, we get back an exception, okay? So that is a good test. Now at this point, you can kind of start copying and pasting this whole like, this structure, I guess you could say. So let's just do another test. That's going to be very similar, and I could say should throw an error if the user um, is missing a password. How about that? So now we're going to kind of reverse this. I'm going to say email, and I'm going to put testing at gmail.com. And we can assume that if we just run this again with ZZZ, let's make sure that this test actually fails and prints out something that we want. So at this point, I realized that this tutorial is actually pretty bad because I totally forgot to await these expects. So these are asynchronous calls, right? So you have to make sure you await on them. And if you don't, they're just, your tests are gonna pass and you're gonna think everything's good, but really in all honesty, your tests aren't doing anything because you haven't awaited on your expect statement. So let's just go ahead and add await statements to that. And that is why this test was like passing when it probably should not be passing. All right, so there you go, you got a failing test. A lot of stuff you gotta keep in mind because you don't wanna write some failing tests that don't actually verify anything. So this one, let's just change to password is required. And again, let's just run this and make sure that this works. And that looks like it was all good, everything passed. I just wanna kinda emphasize that. If I don't put a wait on this, that test is going to pass even if my, ex like, <laughs> even if I'm not throwing an exception inside of my code, right? So just keep that in mind, make sure you await and double inspect everything you're doing in your jest test. All right, so at this point, we have kind of some tests that verify that a password in an email is required. And you can imagine how complex this might get as you add more and more and more properties to your endpoint. Um, so there's probably a cleaner way to like verify that all these are required. But if we pass in a username and password, we're gonna make it pass this line, right? So we need to start testing some other things. So another thing we can test is verify that if there is already a user in the database, it's going to throw an exception, okay? So let's go back to our tests and try to verify that. Let's go here. I'm gonna copy this test and I'm gonna say should throw an error if the user with the same email already exists, okay? So that's probably gonna be a good test. And for the context, remember that we have like these methods that were required, like get user. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna mock those out or stub them out a little bit differently for this particular test. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use a before each call. So I'm gonna define the context here. And then I think it's before each. Yeah, I think it's before each. You can basically recreate objects before every single it statement runs, right? So we wanna recreate our, our context and later on we wanna kinda override it with some custom functionality for every part of our it statements. So this will make sense in a second when I go down. So basically for this test, 
we need to stub out the get user a little bit different, right? So right now it returns null, but we need to say context.getUser is a function that returns, we could say empty object, we could say true, just something that's truthy so that when our code runs, this is going to throw an exception. All right, so we could verify that this prints out an exception called user already exists. And you might state that checking that the exception string in your test is a kind of brittle test. And you, you'll probably be correct on that. You might just want to verify that it throws an exception of a certain type and maybe not check the actual string. But again, this is just a kind of overview of a tutorial. So our test is failing because again, we forgot to pass a password. So let me just do a one, two, three, four, five, six for a password, save that, and then try to rerun our just test. All right, receive promise instead of, okay, so we didn't mock out, we didn't stub out the get user correctly. Um, I probably wanted to put, I don't know, I'll just put like a user ID, one, two, three, four, five, six, or, you know, I'm gonna stub out the user and just pretend like there is one that already exists with the same email. So I'll say testing at gmail.com because I did the fat arrow here, which means I need to wrap these in parentheses. That is why our test was not working. So this tutorial is filled with a lot of little mess ups. So I hope it helps you kind of learn how to debug. All right, so the test is passing. Now, again, what I would recommend doing is going into your implementation and commenting out what you're trying to verify to make sure that your test fails. This is like the most important step with writing tests because there's, very often you write tests that just pass and they don't actually verify anything. So this looks like it's good. It failed when I commented this out. So when the exception is not thrown, our tests fail. And when the exception is thrown, everything works fine. All right, so let's just try to do one more test. Basically what I wanna make sure is that if we basically pass in a new user that doesn't exist and we have a username and password, it should return us back um, basically the, the user without a password on it. Okay, so let's verify that real quick. Um, I'm gonna copy this, because that's kind of what I do. And I'm gonna rename the description sum. So should return the created user if everything was okay. You could probably find a better naming for that, but I think that's good enough for right now. So we're gonna change the stub for get user and just say null. So it's gonna return null. And then also create user. I'll show, I'll show you something called spies in just one second, but let's just make sure this works. So now what we're gonna do is expect this function when you pass it a username and email, or password and an email, and there is no existing user already in your database because we stubbed that call out. What you can do is expect this to return, and then we can put like an object here or put some string. I wanna kind of just run this and see what it's gonna return us because our code is actually working. So I actually need, since this is a promise, I actually need to say resolves. I think it's um, to resolve. I might have to go look at the docs real quick. So I've done this like a hundred times, but I just forgot. It's actually two equals. <laughs> so two equal, um, basically you're gonna make sure that the promise resolves and then you're going to basically check that it equals to some object or something, right? So in this case, we got back an object that has an email of testing in it, right? So what we're actually trying to verify is that we get an object that doesn't have a password. So I should probably rename this test statement to say should return a created user object without a password. All right, so that is a probably a better description and a better test. And now basically what we're verifying is a couple things in our code. We're making sure that this emit call is actually stripping out the password and that we don't get a password sent back to the user. Um, if we take it a step further, we can actually use a spy to verify that the create user call was invoked. So let's just actually try to do that. I'm gonna show you this real quick in Jest. There's a cool tool called a spy and I can kind of put a spy in for the uh, create user object here. I can say jest.fn. So what that allows us to do is basically the create user function call is something that we can actually inspect to make sure that it gets invoked. So I'm gonna put two expect statements in this test. You could also probably split this up into two it statements, but just for brevity, I'm gonna put another expect here. I'm gonna say after we call it and we check that it resolves to something like this, I'm actually gonna say, you know, I actually am gonna move this to another test. So I'm gonna move, copy this and put a test above this that says should try to persist the 
user to the database. Okay, so instead of doing this whole expect thing here, I'm not gonna I'm gonna get rid of that, and I'm just gonna call a wait on this. So now when we call the register interactor, it's going to wait for it to finish doing its thing. And then under the hood, if you actually look at the internals of the register interactor, it should call create user at some point, right? So I'm going to say expect context.create user. And that is to have been called. All right, so that is one way you can use something called spies to verify that certain pieces of functionality are actually happening, right? So again, we want to make sure this test fails if we were to, for some reason, forget to call the create user call, and we never actually persisted that user to the database. We want to make sure that our test fails. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out and make sure that the test fails. All right, it's looking uh, pretty good. You can also take that a step further with spies. You can actually verify that the thing that was passed into create user has certain properties, right? So I'm going to show you that real quick. Um, we could say like expect context is context dot create user dot mock dot calls. And then that's going to be a 2D array where you can basically say, give me the first call and then give me the first parameter in that call, which will happen to be this user with hash pass. So we could actually say like expect this to equal and then we could put like, I don't know. I guess we want to check in this case that the password is salted and hashed because typically when you register a user, you don't want to store the plain text password in your database. You actually want to like hash it and salt it. So I would probably make another it statement to verify that, but we'll just do it right here. So I'm going to say get the, the spy, get the mock call, get the first call, get the first argument. This whole syntax is kind of confusing, but we want to make sure that if we grab the password, it should not be equal to I can say not like this. I can say dot not dot to equal. And then I could say one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's try it again and see if it passes. I think this should work. And again, we want to verify that if for some reason we forgot to do the, the hash here and we're just storing the plain text password, let me just do this. I'll get rid of password here. And if you look at the test, it's saying that the test failed because we expected something to not equal one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see this line failed, expected the password to not equal one, two, three, four, five, six. And at that point we know that, hey, someone broke this functionality and we're actually storing plain text passwords into our database. So I'm gonna undo that real quick, rerun our tests and make sure this all works. Cool, so that basically covers how you can use Jest to write some unit tests over a function. We kind of covered how you can basically do some spies and some stubbing. If you have like some ex internal calls that are happening in your function, it gets a little bit more complex. And there's a lot of different ways you can write your assert statements or your expect statements. So just go read the docs. I might just continue to do a lot of videos about testing in general, because I think it's a really important topic that no one ever really talks about on YouTube or tutorials in general. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also press that subscribe button if you're new to this channel and press that bell icon if you wanna get notifications do other videos like this that should hopefully help you become a better software engineer and web developer. All right, have a good day and thanks for watching.